So now discussing what pulmonary edema. What is pulmonary edema? I hope everyone knows that pulmonary edema is a condition characterized by fluid accumulation in the lungs caused by extra vascular of fluid from pulmonary vasculature into the interstitium and alveole of the lungs. So what happens is the lungs alveoli are flooded with fluid. It is a very good, beautiful photograph showing uh, uh, the secondary pulmonary lobule. So this is the secondary pulmonary lobule. And we can see the septa are thickened with fluid and the alveoli are flooded fluid. Smooth glistening pleural surface of the lung. Patient had marked pulmonary edema, which increased the fluid in lymphatics that run between lung lobules. The lung lobules are outlined also. So usually the lobules, secondary pulmonary lobule is not visible. But in this case, it is very thickened due to congestion of lymphatics and venous return from the lungs. So this is the typical finding of pulmonary edema. So what happens in pulmonary edema is there is accumulation of fluid in the alveoli. So ultimately there is increased uh, fluid in interstitium lead and uh, later on increased fluid in the alveoli. So alveoli are flooded with fluids which impairs the gas exchange. Normally what happens is the alveoli are filled with air and uh, through alveoli there is a gas exchange, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between blood and uh, air. But if the lungs are fluid with, uh, filled with fluid, the gas exchange is impaired and causing uh, hypoxia or hypercarbia. So how, what are the uh, etiology pathogenesis, what are the causes of pulmonary edema? So pulmonary edema can be caused by following major pathophysiological mechanisms. Imbalance of Starling forces. So we all have read Starling forces in our first year MBBS. So it can be increase in pulmonary capillary pressure. Anything which increases the pulmonary capillary pressure, like um, uh, increase in cardiac output, like in thyrotoxicosis or in tachycardia, or anything which increases the pulmonary capillary pressure, Decrease in plasma oncotic pressure like hypoalbuminemia, anything which decreases the plasma oncotic pressure or increase in negative interstitial pressure. How this happens is uh, through increase uh, uh, patients who have uh, re-expansion pulmonary edema. So there is an increase in uh, negative alveolar pressure. So when the alveolar pressure becomes more negative, there is more filtration of fluid from the uh, pulmonary vasculature to the alveoli. So these three forces are usually balanced pulmonary capillary pressure, uh, plasma oncotic pressure, and testicular pressure. When the imbalance arises, there is uh, accumulation of fluid from the pulmonary vasculature to the alveoli, causing pulmonary edema. Other mechanism is damage to alveolar capillary barrier. So there is a membrane between uh, blood vessels and alveoli. It is comprised of endothelium, then interstitium, and then alveolar epithelium. Whenever this membrane is damaged due to multiple causes, we'll be discussing later. Though, so this causes direct exudation of fluid. So uh, without any changes in pressure, the uh, fluid from the blood is directly exudated into the alveoli. Lymphatic obstruction again can cause pulmonary edema because we know lymphatics drain the fluid from everywhere and they return it to systemic circulation. So if lymphatics are obstructed, it can cause pulmonary edema and some unknown mechanisms there. So talking about starling forces. The extent to which fluid accumulates in the interstitium of lung depends on the balance of hydrostatic and oncotic forces within the pulmonary capillaries and in the surrounding tissue. Hydrostatic pressure, what it does is favors movement of fluid from capillary to the interstitium. Oncotic pressure favors movement of fluid into the vessels. So net flow of fluid across a membrane is determined by applying the equation. So there is a balance of both these pressures. And net filtration of fluid may increase when changes in different parameters of the Starling equation. So when, uh, either the hydrostatic pressure increases or oncotic pressure decreases or the trans pulmonary pressure becomes more negative. All these conditions can cause imbalance of Starling forces and cause pulmonary edema. So it is again classified, pulmonary edema can also be classified based on the cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic causes. Cardiogenic causes again are mainly due to increase in hydrostatic pulmonary capillary pressures like heart failure or decrease on cortic or static interstitial pressures or volume overload. Non-cardiogenic causes mainly are based due to increased permeability, which we have read, either damage of endothelium, epithelium, or interstitium. Anything which causes damage to the uh, alveolar capillary barrier causes non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, like uh, patients with ARDS. So infections can cause damage, trauma can cause damage, inflammation, aspiration syndromes, hemodynamic instability in patients with sepsis, shock, Immunological diseases causes uh, immune-mediated damage. Multiple drugs also cause damage to this barrier. Pancreatitis patients can have pulmonary edema. 
despite gases or toxins, metabolic diseases, hematological diseases like DIC, neurological diseases, so there is an entity called neurological pulmonary edema, obstetric causes, radiation, ventilator-induced lung injury, those patients who are on uh, long ventilation with high tidal volume can have ventilator-induced lung injury or miscellaneous causes. So there is main two mechanisms, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic. So cardiogenic is based on differential pressures, Non-cardiogenic is based, mainly based on increased permeability. Other causes can be re-expansion pulmonary edema, high altitude pulmonary edema, and lymphatic obstructions. So, how to identify pulmonary edema? Uh, most important thing we what we do in our day-to-day -day practice is chest X-ray. So, how to determine uh, define uh, identify pulmonary edema in X-ray? There is a typical experience of bad wings. So, what we can see here, the opacities are arising from the hilum, and there is uh, relatively clearance towards periphery. So it is looking like a bad wing appearance. So this is a wing, this is heart, and this is a wing. It is like bad wing or butterfly, whatever you may say. Uh, and the uh, lower uh, zones or periphery are relatively spared. So this is a typical finding. Other than that, what we can find, we can also find pleural effusion. So in patients with cardiogenic pulmonary, we can also find there is some blunting of angles. There may be <laughs> cardiomegaly increase in heart size. There may be curly A or B lines. So curly A lines are from high lung to the periphery of the lung. Curly B lines are in the periphery of the lungs. So these uh, lines may be visible. There may be periboronchial cuffing or alveolar opacities due to uh, fluid in the alveoli. So these things may be there. Again, this is a representation of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Again, we can see the opacities are mainly from the center. So it is arising from the high lung to the periphery. And periphery is relatively spared. So angles also are relatively spared. So this is the typical finding of pulmonary edema, uh, where the opacities are more concentrated towards the hilum or center rather than towards periphery. So cardiogenic pulmonary edema can be due to multiple causes. It most common cause is acute coronary syndrome. Any patients with myocardial infarction causes decreased uh, pumping of uh, heart and may cause pulmonary edema. Arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation are again a very common cause. Atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, anything can cause pulmonary edema. Valvular heart disease like um, uh, um, AR or uh, MS can cause pulmonary edema. Hypertension, uh, as we have seen, hypertensive heart failure, uh, sudden increase in BP can increase after load and cause pulmonary edema. Cardiomyopathies like dilated cardiomyopathy or cardiac tamponade, which causes restriction, uh, sorry, um, uh, diastolic dysfunction. So it can also cause pulmonary edema. <coughs>